I'm out of studying on biology and medicine videos. Please make sure to subscribe, join the forum and group for the latest videos. Please visit Facebook on my Instagram. Please like and you can also ask questions, answer questions, and post some interesting things, including artworks. Um, in this video, we'll look at the mucosal immune system. The mucosal epithelial cells are continuously exposed to pathogens. These are the cells lining the gut tract, our lung tract, our nasal cavity, for example. The mucosal surfaces con constitute the largest and most important interaction between the body and the outside environment. The mucosal surfaces include the respiratory tract, the gastrointestinal tract, and the urogenital tract. Because these mucosal cells are critical in the protection against pathogens, they contain approximately three quarters of all lymphocytes, so the T and B cells. They predominantly reside beneath the mucol mucosal surfaces or within the mucosal surfaces lining the respiratory tract, gastrointestinal tract, and urogenital tract. And that is why we have what's called a mucosal immunity as well as a systemic immunity. The mucosal immunity being the gastrointestinal tract and respiratory tract, for example, the systemic immunity being the spleen and the systemic lymph nodes where the blood circulates around the body. Mucosal surfaces, as mentioned, are continuously exposed to pathogens and so are prone to infections, such as within the gastrointestinal tract, you can have worm infection, and within the respiratory tract, we can have viruses, which um, which causes um, flu. But some pathogens does not need to be pathogenic, such as within the gastrointestinal tract, we have our own pathogens residing under, uh, within it, which help in food digestion, for example. So if we take a cross-section or a section within the small intestines, we can see well what we mean by non-pathogenic uh, pathogens. So here we have the mucosal epithelial cells lining the intestinal tract and we have the lumen where food passes through. Within the lumen on mucosal surfaces we have what's called commensal microorganisms or bacteria which help in food digestion. They are also referred to as microbiota and they live in symbiosis with their hosts. But they can be pathogenic if they leave the area where they usually live in symbiosis with their hosts, such as if these commensal microorganisms move to the heart, for example, then they will create an immune response. Therefore, they must usually always stay in the gut. Now, I should have also said that the mucosal immune system ha have also lymph nodes, because lymph nodes are important in initiating the adaptive immune response. These lymph nodes within the gut are known as mesenteric lymph nodes. There are also lymph nodes um, near, the, near our lungs. The mesenteric lymph nodes are all around the gastrointestinal tract, particularly the small intestines. So they're everywhere, such as here. So let's look at the gastrointestinal tract specifically and see how the mucosal um, immune tissues are organized. There's a abbreviation known as MALT, which stands for Mucosal Associated Lymphoid Tissue. What this means is that it's just the tissue within the gastrointestinal tract or the respiratory tract where lymphocytes or immune cells reside in and are organized into. So let's take a look at where these immune cells are, etc. Let's look at this. So here we have the stomach and the small intestines. Let's take a section of the small intestines. Here we have the lumen of the small intestines. And let's take another section within um, this small epithelial layer of the small intestines. So this is what we see in a very simplified form. We see the villi, uh, we see epithelial cells containing villi and forming crypts within the small intestines. And therefore, here is the lumen where the food passes through and where bacteria also can pass through as well. Now, we have two important sites within the mucosal system. We have the what's called the effector site. 
The effectocytes are where effector cells reside in. Effector cells being activated CD8, activated CD4, as well as plasma cells. Because remember, plasma cells are already like the activated B cells. We also have lymph vessels all going around this area because lymph vessels are also important in the fat absorption, remember, as well as bringing the immune cells in and out of these areas. The lymph vessels connect to the mesenteric lymph nodes, remember this. And then the other important site is the inductive site, which is also referred to as the organized lymphoid tissue. Typically, the inductive sites do not contain the effector cells, the activated lymphocytes, for example. They usually contain the naive lymphocytes. But they also contain many antigen-presenting cells, such as dendritic cells, because the inductive site is where um, they induce, typically where the mucosal immune system is induced from the antigen-presenting cell, which can then activate the naive lymphocytes. The inductive sites are also connected by, by a lymph, via lymph vessel to the mesenteric lymph nodes. Within the mesenteric lymph nodes, we also have the naive lymphocytes, where if the dendritic cell captures an antigen, it can go into the mesenteric lymph nodes and activate the naive lymphocytes as well. The organized lymphoid tissue within the gut, because we're looking at the gut right now, make up what's called GALT, which stands for gut-associated lymphoid tissue. And this is essentially a branch of MALT, the mucosal-associated lymphoid tissue. So MALT is essentially a big abbreviated word denoting all the other smaller um, specific mucosal surfaces. So MALT can be GALT, which is specifically the gut, can be NALT, which is specifically the nasal cavity, or can be the BALT, which can be specifically the bronchus, the lung. In this series of video, we're, we will be specifically looking at GALT, the gut-associated lymphoid tissue, and as well as the gut immune system and immune response. So, this was just an overview of the mucosal immunity. You can click on the, diff, the mucosal immunity videos, which will look in more detail at the mucosal immunity, particularly of the gut. Thank you.